Hello, hello, uh, my name is Cage TV, and today I am joined by Jacob the Animal Gaming for a Yapathon, as we call it, about uh, Transformers 1, the new CG 3D animated Transformers movie. How did you find it, Jacob the Animal Gaming HD? Uh, you know, as of course it's me, Jacob the Animal Gaming, I, I pretty much liked it. Recording this out of your iconic well that you live in, that uh, people pour big buckets of sludge down. Yeah, as as you may know, I'm uh, currently in the Ilchester Tunnel in Maryland. Ah, hmm. I, you know, I hear it's kind of nice this uh, time of year. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ralph, you saw it today. Mm -hmm. You you saw it early as well. You saw it at the, at the yeah. earliest point uh, any kind of people in the public could. You saw it in LA. You went to the godforsaken heart of LA. You went to the Paramount lot. And you saw this brand new, spanking new Transformers movie that everyone is going crazy over. You saw it early. You have, you've had the most time to formulate your thoughts, and you've just seen it again uh, today as we're recording this, right? Tell me, yeah. how did you feel about it? Right? I, I don't want to be too cynical and too nasty and too kind of mm. critical. Yeah, I just want to hear you first. Okay. Well, first of all, I'll talk to the, I'll talk about the experience. Uh, very wonderful. Even if the um, the guy I like went to the Paramount Theater didn't know the fuck I was talking about. He was just like kind of confused. Wait, did you? Did you but, uh, like, was there some security guard? And you're like, I'm here to see the movie. And you went, eh? What? Yeah, I was like, I was, I, I gave him, I showed him the email and everything. Like, <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. You walked. But up it gives like supervisor. You walked up to the armed guard and he was about to shoot you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was a very pleasant experience. I, I got to see, uh, got to meet some people, especially one, uh, I think Gravy from Infinison. I was like literally right next to him. Oh, I, I, yeah, I know that guy. Uh, he, he's yeah. very good with the ping. I'm not sure if um, many people... Uh, or, I, I can't remember his full username. Gravy underscore, I think. Um, Something. He's on He's on Instagram. I, it's I pretty cool. I'll flash it in screen just uh, so everyone knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. He, he's got a um, full array of paint. Uh, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, so there was, uh, there was other people there too. I think uh, apparently Key and fucking uh, Javi was there. Key and Carlisle, my boss. My boss who pays me to scream things into the microphone. Yeah, uh, but was, I got to see some people who work on fucking movies. That was pretty cool. But other than that, it's like uh, very pleasant. I uh, like um, I'll send some pictures, but like the Paramount Theater is like very, very beautiful. Is, it's is like it for like, some reason. Is it like a nice kind of it's, old school uh, picture? Theater? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. It's, it's like that. They got the carpet and everything. It's like you know the, the like uh, things on the screen that like flap and things. <laughs> right, like it's, big, it's hard to say. Big curtains and everything. Yeah, big curtains and everything. Very nice, very nice. Right, I, uh, yeah. I, I just want to hear it straight up from you. Out of ten, mm -hmm. what is this movie? Ooh. Okay, I know some people have mixed thoughts on it. Yeah. But as someone who, like, I'll be real with you all, I, I despised the first trailer for the movie. I thought it was like it looked like complete. <laughs> like, I, I, didn't, I didn't get the overreaction. I thought. I, okay, I'm gonna sound like a total jackass, like liar here. See, when I first saw that trailer, I thought this movie has potential, but the trailer isn't showing it. I thought that's exactly what's gonna happen, and in like a couple of months, people are gonna say this movie's great. And that sounds like I'm just making it up because I'm seeing it in retrospect. But I, I swear that's what I thought. But you at the start, you didn't like that movie. No, sorry, the, the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I, like I, I stood up. I was at the like uh, I was waiting until like the you know the thing they had where they sent the fucking movie and like the trailer in space and everything. They're like 240p shit. Oh, I um, forgot they did that. Yeah. It was so weird. It was like, we're broadcasting this into outer space. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, and I waited and I waited and then I, I saw it in like 240p and I was like, this is like <laughs> fucking dog shit. You and saw like, it in 240p. That is the drum. Yeah, just the glass. <laughs> yeah, but. And then I saw like the HD one like after the fucking event and I was like, okay, yeah, this looks like complete. Like, like. Like, imagine, like, it, like it's like fucking Despicable Me, you know, like, speaking out of a... Do, do not, know, okay, do not speak sour of Despicable Peak, right? Excuse yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, me. uh... <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, um, fucking, I don't know, whatever, like, new kid shit movie is like, coming out. Scary Toilet 25? Like, yeah, Scary Toilet 25, where it's just like, you know, they make the, they make the MCU fucking jokes of, like, that just happened. It was like... And it, <laughs> and it was, like, just so put off. Because it, it like made it seem like a standard kids movie, but then like, so like I had the most like 
lowest expe expectations, if you get me. Mm -hmm. However, when you so, saw the movie... And then and when I saw the movie, I was just like, what the fuck? They advertised that movie like it was fucking dog shit. <laughs> do you, do you <laughs> remember like, um, when, uh, when there was the initial kind of like reaction to it and it was very divisive? Do you remember that stupid drawing I made that just pissed people off? Yeah, I like the fucking chipple dipple effect. <laughs> I just, I just thought, I, I think I was in a bit of a rotten mood that day, and I just thought, these people just talk, just continue shit about all this product, all this Transformer stuff. I'm just gonna put everything I don't like about Transformers fans in one image, right? It, it didn't even make sense. There was like, the the guy had like posters like Beast Machines in the last night, and he'd bought like a Red Fifteen thing, and I was making fun of people who only buy from Amazon. I put all of that in one image, so it's not even like coherent. I'll flash it up on the yes. screen, right? It wasn't even coherent, like it was just things I didn't like, but somehow people felt like targeted by it. People get pissed off by it, and. <laughs> as, I, as, as I said, it was the triple dipple effect. It was the, the silly internet troll effect. I, 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 I just from that five minutes of me being like fucking perturbed, a bit, a bit rotten, a bit in a sour mood. That that get people up in arms. People spent time typing out comments annoyed at with that drawing of a big fat slug man with a propeller cap. It's like I like Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> but is this like? Yeah, I, I just hated the trailer, but, like, as I saw the movie, it was just, like, you know, because, like, here's the thing, it's, like, you know, I sat down, they were playing music, they were, like, this is, you know, they, like, and then, like, they got everybody out. So, like, I'm just gonna say this right now, the first person they showed was fucking Lorenzo, I whispered <laughs> to my brother's ear, I, I wish I, like, it was, like, everybody was clapping, I just whispered to my brother's ear, not this guy again. <laughs> not dude. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Yeah, like fall on that, and like here's the thing, I was front row, like straight front row, so it's like it's either he heard me, or like he did just didn't un like pay attention. I mean, but I mean, then like of course there was a non zero yeah. chance he heard that. I don't know what the odds are, maybe one percent, but he could have heard that. Maybe his little, his little ear could have perked up. He went. Whoop. He's like he's like little uh little old man ear. <laughs> I mean, it's an old man ear. Yeah, but then like they got a uh, fucking Josh Cooley. He showed up. He was, he was he very nice. He, like, he wasn't invited. He just wandered in. He, like, <laughs> yeah, he's reeking like, a beer, reeking a wine. Just, yeah, like, but it was, it was very cool. Now, I don't know where fucking, like, uh, they were just like, oh, Brian, Brian Tyree Henry, fucking Keegan Michael Key, and Chris Hensworth. And everybody was <laughs> clapping and cheering. Everybody clapped. I, I do everybody remember clapped. Right, when I went to that, uh, just a uh, couple of days ago there, the, the fancy European live stream premiere, whatever was going on there. Um, mm -hmm. I, they, they had this kind of weird live stream where it was like, premiering in London, Transformers won the European premiere, right? And uh, it was it was the mm -hmm. most British thing I've ever seen. I went I went with Ryan Sushi. Uh, I, I went down, right? And the the thing, they, this was like uh, the Glasgow BAFTAs where the, the Glasgow BAFTAs yeah. were set up beside someone's bus stop where they got off work, right? Uh, you could see in the background behind all like the stuff they'd set up for the press and like the the crowds there was like smoke and vape shop and like you'd see like a mcdonald's in the background <laughs> <laughs> like it was just the most grungy london shithole city background and you had like um like you said keegan michael key uh bride through Harry, all of them kind of kicking about for the premiere and i remember um they started showing clips of lorenzo kicking about and like so he, I think he signed someone's Funko Pop or something. It was weird. <laughs> was... Sign, sign this BBW Funko Pop. Yeah. Lorenzo, <laughs> sign my BBW Funko Pop, please. <laughs> no one's gonna get that. It's a stupid inside joke. Um, yeah. But as soon as he came on, they had like music playing in the kind of the premiere background, and like as soon mm -hmm. as it was like as soon as he came on, it was like dramatic, like kind of evil music. Like, like as soon as he came on, the music just synced up and like. Like Ryan made a comment about that, and see the guys, uh, the guys beside me when we were watching it, they're like, "Oh no, that's fucking guy!" I, I think it's kind of a universal, like, uh, you know, beyond the borders thing that people, you know, Transformers fans see this Lorenzo guy, and he's kind of become so infamous now. They're like, "Oh fuck's sake, man!" <laughs> yeah, it's just so. It's just like I was like that. It was just like it's just universal. That it's just like, yeah, oh, universal. God, this word. guy. <laughs> but it's like um. The theater experience is very nice, even though I was in like the front screen. So it's like in most like um like whenever you go into theater and you're in the front row, it's like fucking awful. For some reason, it wasn't on mine. Up straight in your neck. No, no, it wasn't. I didn't actually look up. I was, it was perfectly fine. Oh, it must be that kind of fancy theater. Yeah, but like um, it was but enough uh 
you know, um, one thing I will say is though, because I got a ticket, I'll like I'll send some images of the shit that was there. Mm-hmm. Like like they, like that reminder for all you uh, all you schmucks. Uh, I got a. Uh, this was free, by the way. So the ticket, which was huge, um, I got the. You know the statues they had, like uh, never been around. You stole everywhere. one. <laughs> yeah, I put on my plum hole. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I got all up the TF1 premiere. This statue at me plum hole, and no one noticed. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll send some images for it to be on screen. It'll be on screen. Yeah, yeah. The big ass ticket, everything, and poster. But um, oh, but let's get to uh. To the, to the movie. Yeah, no, I love, movie. yeah, I about us fucking waddling into the theater. Ralph, what'd you yeah. score? Um, okay. If I, okay, so I'm just gonna say I'm excluding favorites because nobody gives a fuck about that and like everybody's just like stopped thinking about it. Well, I feel like you could factor in Babers. Maybe like the first thing. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. But like if I had to say maybe like a like a seven? Like, I, I'm pretty sure it's a solid seven. I think I'm the same. I thought we were gonna disagree. I'm a I'm a seven or six, seven or eight, if you ask me, depending how I'm feeling. Yeah, it's a, it's like a seven, like point eight or something like that. It's like a higher score because I, I I really did enjoy the movie. And I don't want people to jump in our throat just because it's not a nine or a ten out of ten, right? Because I think um, yeah. when you go on social media and you see a lot of these things, people are going crazy over this movie. They're saying. You know, it emotionally devastated them. They're crying. They were doing flips in the theater. They shot off a flare and like burned the place down. I think yeah. this is a very good movie, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, I have my criticism. We, but we both do. Everyone does, right? Uh, it's, Everybody. Does. It's it's just, I it's all right to just be like, oh yeah, that was quite a good movie. I yeah, uh, I felt things. I enjoyed it. I think it had an influence in me, right? Um, yeah. I, I, and not every movie yeah. can be like perfect. The very few are. Yeah, very few are, but it's like none can be like you know like explode you with joy. No, to be fair, right? Um, near the end, the yeah, uh, the kind of final act that everyone's kind of going on about. I I can't lie. This is the first film in some time that's made me feel like a little bit of adrenaline, like kind of edgy or see like, you know, I I, oh, yeah. I genuinely <laughs> felt like a little little bit of adrenaline near the end uh, with Megatron and just the way he stole the show. Yeah, I feel uh. I feel like um, if we're gonna talk about characters, it is definitely an Optimus and Megatron centric like story. Yeah. It's like they steal a show, hundred percent. It had to be. It, that, that's what the movie had to get right, and I think it did it with flying colors. Yeah, because it's like if they didn't, then it'd be an absolute like uh, dumpster fire. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if you want to go for the movie just chronologically and give our thoughts about that. Uh... Um, because like um we were both like very um top like geeks and like. Uh, dip shits over epic like animation maybe we should yeah epic geek nerds we should talk about the animation because we're like very like uh yeah into that stuff that that is true actually yeah i i had some notes here i think i misplaced them but i, I definitely highlighted the character animation this film is excellent in its character animation that's something yeah that, uh, i think i would maybe want to very much do uh, for a living, you know, I'm a university for animation. I, I really paid attention to that. I think this is some superb character animation, especially, like you said, with Optimus and Megatron. Yeah, but, like, there's, like, little things you'll notice, like, um, like, how, like, whenever, like, I guess, like, forget? I, I guess it's when, like, Megatron's agitated, he, like, like moves around his lips and stuff. The, the, yeah, yeah, like, like um, he kind of, he, like, kind of grinds his teeth. A lot of body language in this, you're right. Yeah, very much. Uh, and it, it's like, like I gotta say, like, and I don't want everyone to go, oh, it's like Spider Verse, because it's like <laughs> there's a very clear, like, different style to this Forces film. I feel like it's more like, it's inspired by like, like, did you get like High Moon inspiration? Because it feels like High Moon, like game inspiration. I think it was in the back of my head, right? Um, I, I, I didn't want to go into this movie just like thinking about other Transformers media, because I think I kind of did that at Bumblebee, and it clouded my vision of what it was. But I, I get yeah. what you mean, right? Because High Moon really nailed these kind of very detailed, uh, kind of alive Cybertron environments, if that makes sense. And you can kind of see yeah. that in how like the planet literally transforms, the surface is like moving. There's lots of details. There's um, kind of like funny little Easter eggs in the background, like the the actual jackpot gambling machine, the background of uh, the miners' place, like the little kind of couple yeah, it's just like yeah, you know, that's little, something you would see. Game fanatics. Yeah, like see if you were playing like. Uh, fall cybertron you like you maybe went to the left and it was like a little easter egg where there's like a jackpot machine that's what it feels like 
Yeah. It was just like that's that sort of thing. It's just like um, there's there's other little things too. It's just like I will say, you know, if you're the average viewer, it's like you probably won't like get it. But like like when I saw the movie and I I spoke to Keisha about it, I was like, hey, there's some like real deep cut references. <laughs> You'll see a lot of gulp shitters. I, I should I should say actually um. First of all, I think uh, you're totally right about the character animation, the little details and things like that. It's the details yeah. that make these movies. But that reminds me. I remember when you first saw this, right? It was like June or July, mm -hmm. months before, yeah, you know, yeah. months before any, any of the rest of us could see it, right? And I said, could you mm -hmm. give me some cryptic hints so I know what I'm looking forward to when I see this movie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember all, I was like prodding you for like stupid bits of information, right? And uh, I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. a few things. I remember the first thing that I asked. It was it was just out of the blue. It was a stupid joke with my crude sense of humor. I said, "The set." I, I was like, "Central Prime's not making this out of this movie alive." Bro, bro, that, that cunt is cooked, right? And I said, "Yeah." I, I imagined the Decepticons rising up. You know, this is a Megatron origin movie. And I said, "Just for yeah. a laugh, hey Ralph, does the Central Prime get beheaded by ISIS?" And you, you were like, <laughs> "I," you were like, "I cannot see anything." And I was like, get the, I, get, pull up the screenshot. <laughs> I, yo, I'm flashing the screen, right? I, I saw that and I thought, oh my God, does he actually get like a ritual execution? And it, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but um, things like that where uh, you, you said how a little sticker was very important to the film. It was uh, the kind of essential in the backbone for a lot of stuff. I didn't believe you there. I thought you were being silly, but no, the sticker which kind of took me out a bit at first, right? I remember kind of like being like, is this, where, is this where this movie's going with the Decepticon sticker at the start with Megatron? And I was like, hmm. But um, I, I, I understand in a way. It's kind of like how he goes, it's it's like, it's like he grows up. Uh, yeah, it's like, um, it's very much a, a Chekhov's gun, if you get me. Like, you know, that sort of like. Yeah, this is film class 101. This is basic uh, yeah. foreshadowing. Pay, pay, pay off and setup. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's something else I want to say. This movie has a lot of setup and payoff uh, with parallels and stuff, right? Things like mm -hmm. at the start, uh, Optimus catches Megatron. Then at the end, uh, Megatron catches Optimus, but he lets him go. Uh, a, a lot of crazy stuff like that, which. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, the details make these films. That, made, that, made my, that scene made my jaw drop. Like, absolutely. It was like. It's like that, like, and how it leads to the the other scene where I said is like, you know, like where it's like, hey, you know that scene in Revenge of the Fallen where it's like fucking Sam meets the crimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't believe. I was it. like, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, they do that scene, but actually good. <laughs> I think I think we'll save that, but uh, I think that's definitely the the biggest part of the film I want to talk about. I think that's the bit that made the film for me. But um, I'm just thinking, right, uh, just going through this film mm -hmm. in chronological order. So we open up, uh, and I like this little twist to Optimus. Uh, he's not an archivist, he's not a data clerk or whatever, he's not like a, a higher uh, kind of cl like class system than uh, yeah. Megatron. He, he sneaks in there and that's where he gets the information because this character is a very curious guy. He's he's um, he's, he's, he's smart, right? He's open-minded, maybe a little bit naive. He's a very optimistic fellow. He's, he's optimistic, you could say, wink, wink. He's, yeah. he's like very curious, he's very ambitious, maybe a little naive, but uh, he's a very open-minded character who you can see throughout the movie like um this guy he's intelligent but also kind and i think that's um it's like your kind of peter parker like good guy superhero kind of vibe to him that's pretty cool yeah. uh then um you know blah 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 he gets this is a nice kind of opening set piece where he gets chased uh the upside down buildings with cybertron being underground how did you feel about that oh mm, like the whole entire like thing with cybertron being an underground city yeah it's uh, that type of thing mm -hmm. I, I feel like I, I don't really. Mm, and I, I don't mind it. It's very unique, I'll say. I don't mind it actually. It looks cool. I think like, uh, like when the film opens up and you see like this big upside down tower, I was like, okay, I, I you know, I, I'm invested. This is the first shot, and I'm like, you know, what's going on here? Yeah, it's like um, it's just like it it feels unique, and like you know, you can tell like you know, they uh, basically. Like whoever, like you know, person who made this actually gave a shit and like <laughs> did their research. Because like um, that's one thing I'll say about the movie is like, um, throughout like all the Transformers movies, like Cybertron has always looked like um, like just trash. Yeah. Like garbage. You, you can't really picture people living there all too much. Yeah. And I feel like. And it's like the only. It's kind of the same. It's like the only movie where like there's not. I, yeah. I wish they could have maybe shown. 
I think a lot of people will say this as well, you, should, you could show a little bit more kind of civilian life because sometimes it does just feel like a backdrop for what the characters are doing. But there are certain yeah. points, like, see when Alita crashes through the big office building and, like, there's people going about their business and she, there's, like, this cool, like, building design where um, it's just kind of, like, slanted, angular windows she, like, yeah. crashes up against and drives about. That, I, I was, like, seeing that, I was like, wow, this is this is a good movie, right? I, I think um, we could have yeah. seen a little bit more of that. But Sorry, what were you saying? I, I was just saying, because it's, like, um... Because, like, you know in the first film there's, like, the flashback and it just literally looks like a bunch of metal trees for Cybertron? <laughs> I, okay... I suppose that is a different movie and it's not as relevant here, but I do sort of appreciate, uh, appreciate I do appreciate Transformers 1, that Michael Bay movie, how there was a certain vision that kind of get lost, especially going into like just, you know, as the movies went on, setting one, third one, yeah. especially the fourth and fifth, whatever the fuck came after that, right? Yeah. And there was a very unique vision with the first movie where all of the robots in that movie, they, they, they're like alien they're just they're just weird aliens wearing truck parts like the decepticons are like weird oh yeah kind of, i think i've said this before and like over things but the decepticons are like weird kind of bugs and fish and creatures the autobots have like segmented eyes and like it, it feels like these are just weird alien creatures that come from like a total inhospitable bizarre world uh yeah. I, I respect it for that right even if it like yeah. when, you, when you think about it more it's like who lives here yeah Exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah, in this I movie, that. right, I think mm -hmm. they, they take advantage of the whole alien robots thing because um, the transformation stuff especially, like, I, I know we keep talking about it, but the final act, Megatron has his cannon ripped off, right? And you'd think, oh, well, that's yeah. him disarmed. Uh, but, like, the cannon, it flies off him and he reattaches it to his back. But since he's an alien transforming robot, he can just fire off his back. Oh, like, somehow that, like, the wires in his back connect to his brain and they just start shooting. I love that. They're, like, weird and alien. They, they take advantage of it. That's what I like to see in these movies. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's, like, um, it feels very, like, unique and things. Like, um, one of the, one of the moments... It's like when they um, first enter, like, how would you say, like, outside the surface? of the, yeah, the surface, yeah. The, and it's the like, deer, yeah. The deer is like, it's like, feels like very, like, unique. It feels very lively. <laughs> it's just like, feels, it feels different, if you get me right. I, I, I think I was just like, oh, it's just deer. But then, like, they look up and the little, uh, the little antlers, they're like, kind of holograph things that turn red when they're in danger. That's what sold me on it. At first, I was a little bit cynical. I was like, "Did, did, did, a, did a fucking ghost just fly by there? What was that? He's haunted." <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was that was. A... <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just like I don't know. It, I thought like when I saw chairs, I was like, "Oh yeah, it's like fucking cyberverse." Where it's like they just had like random ass like animal creatures as like robots. <laughs> it was like no, it was like very different. Yeah, there is. Um, I suppose it comes with being a big budget movie like this, but there is a. I don't know if I want to say sophisticated level of care because it is just it, it is Transformers at the end of the day. You shouldn't expect too much, but uh, yeah. the, there is that much more care put into it. Like um, the fact that the the planet transforms as well because as it's revealed in the start, the planet is Primus. Which it, uh, see, judging from the trailers, right? When I saw that the surface was like um, kind of like fauna and plant life and stuff. I thought like it was mm -hmm. implying that Cybertron was this kind of like terraformed world by the Quintessons or something like you know going into your G1 origins, but no, it, it literally mm -hmm. is like, oh, bleh, excuse me, I, uh, sorry, the the ghosts made me burp in my mouth there. Yeah, it literally is this uh, living, breathing world, and Primus as a Transformer, so it transforms. It's like uh, his, it's like his skin, his skin shifts almost. That's uh, that's another little thing. I, th there are a lot of things in this movie to think about. Not as much as I would like. I feel like um, I, I think it's like like I was saying there about like maybe seeing a bit more Cybertronian like civilian life before the war. It may, yeah, you know, like, maybe, um, maybe that's not like the best criticism because the focus is on Optimus and Megatron. But it's like I wish there was just yeah. a few more details that could have you thinking after the movie ends. Like McAdams, like a little cheeky McAdams. Cheeky McAdams, yeah, like things like that. Like oh. um maybe jazz plays there i wonder what jazz uh, who who's that in jazz's band etc etc like just wee things to like uh elevate it and stuff. just like um like like um give a bit of that like population feel right yeah yeah you want it to feel loving and breathing which i think they did very much but it's like we're gritty bastards like we not enough more. yeah we're, we're gritty oh, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> um i feel 
one thing, and I, I feel it's a very notable thing, is that um, we didn't, like, for, you know, of course, like, this is a thing that happens in every movie, but let's, um, celebrity voice acting. Hmm. I feel that's one thing. Yeah, okay. How, how do you definitely. feel about that? I think, um, no, okay, like, this movie was perfectly fine with voice acting. Brian Terry Henry, I think, was uh, the star. Stole the show. Stole the show. Stole the show. Stole the show. Right, um, Krebs Hemworth, yeah, he's, he's fine. Scarlett Johansson, fine. Keith Michael Key, he's, he's, he's just playing it crazy, you know, fair enough. He's Bumblebee, he's got to have that energy. Um, yeah. Who, John something played Sentinel Prime. I can't remember his name, I'm awfully sorry. Mm. Oh, Armlander, Armlander Sentinel Prime. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've never even seen the boys. I, I can't even make any comments. Um, uh, I, I think pretty Homelander, much, Pharaoh and Mitch. Pretty much every voice actor in this movie was some kind of celebrity. If that, yeah, Steve yeah. Shemmy Starscream, Dead Animal Blood, Ditto. Uh, that was, I think that was, uh, that's a nice kind of new thing. I, I appreciated that. I think, um, Maybe a little bit biased here, but of all the kind of celebrity voice actors, I think it was uh, Brian Terry Henry and Steve Buscemi that stood out to me. Megatron and Starscream. Yeah, because, like, um, I, I was surprised, because, like, I was like, oh, Brian Terry Henry is like, yeah, I, I don't I don't think he's going to, like, steal the show as, like, Megatron. How is he going to do it? And then, like, I was knocked my socks off. <laughs> my socks blew off. I think there's a few moments yeah. where it, he doesn't sound as, like, crazy and intimidating as he could be. I, I feel like he... He, pl he plays it a little bit too young, right? I think, see, see when it comes to the final act, you should be, like, booming mm -hmm. and, and bassy and evil and kind of... And, like, grizzly. Yeah, grizzly. <laughs> grizzly tail. You should, you should have that kind of <laughs> grit in your voice. And he doesn't have it yeah. as much as I'd like, but that's that's very much a small complaint because the minute... Um, it's very much a nitpick. The minute um, he starts acting like angry as Megatron, like, the second um, he gets a taste of power... And he just starts getting like more and more pissed off, just realizing what he has the potential to do, what he could do. Like that speech, you know, I want to kill Central Prime. That's when the movie gets like that's when the movie goes from like good to great. That that was such a good speaking about voice acting, character acting, mannerisms, body language, that is that's when the movie just kicks off, if you ask me. Yeah. If I had to like say like who was the weakest, I'd probably say Alita One. Is it just felt like regular? Like, didn't, I feel like didn't get enough. That's because um, they didn't give too much for the character to do, you know. Yeah, she was like very much like not um, enough, you know, uh, in the film. Which like, you know, for all those like big Alita One fans, it's like probably a disappointment. But it's like, you know, it's all right. It's it's a movie mainly focused on two characters that is like of their origin. So you know, it's fine. I, I think it says something, right? One of my friends, Ryan, who doesn't know Transformers all well, he goes to see this movie. And he calls her not RC. Like, Alita, 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 <laughs> Alita needs something, man. And this movie was a perfect chance for it. And it wasn't. It wasn't that much for her. like. Alita fans ain't getting like they're getting absolutely torn to shreds because like her spark does nothing with yeah. her Netflix series like completely ruined her. All, like, all <laughs> seven Alita fans, they're uh, they're they're going for a harsh time right now. Did I ever tell you yeah. that uh, Scarlett Johansson was in some movie and she was filming it in Govan uh, in Glasgow and they, they filmed my uncle without permission but then never even used it for the film movie? That, that's a story for another time. Anyway, because I, I know we're running limited time here so we need to get yeah. uh, can I get our thoughts out. Um, mm, I'm just thinking... I guess characters? Yeah, characters. I want, I want to say, right, I think it's very funny that at the start of the movie Wheeljack is the one to cause a kind of incident. Like, I, I feel like that's a nice wee detail. There was there was some kind of like the you know the background characters who I feel like could have been represented better like Ironhide isn't Southern that maybe punch a wall Jazz Jazz has something to do but like not really kind of gets his leg blown off and it's like um it's like a little side plot thing yeah like he comes back at the end and it's cool but it's like we haven't seen Jazz since he got ripped in half and did fuck all and was kind of a bit racy in the 2007 movie I wanted to see Jazz back in the big yeah. screen doing something cool because he's he is a very cool character, but um, that's it's it's small potatoes. Did did you? Yeah, small potatoes. Yes, yeah, I think you you said a lot. Uh, you said your kind of piece with like how this is an Optimus and Megatron movie, but I know you're you're the Bumblebee man. Like we said in the, in the, the Rise mm -hmm. of the Beast video, right? You're the Bumblebee man. How did you feel about Bumblebee? Okay. So yeah, as a certified Bumblebee man, you know the yes, Bumblebee as a man. Certified I will say Bumblebee moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. With this characterization, I feel like 
Yeah. In the start of the film, I was a bit like, you know, because they made him look like a crazy dude. And I was just like, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. It was like, because he like talks to like fucking like objects he and shit. He talks to A.A. Like, Ron. Yeah, he talks to A.A. Ron and shit. But um, I, I feel like as soon as you get to notice him more, it's like, we, you know, he's clearly meant to be the... Um, and like, I guess it's just how his character is. He's supposed to be the kid appeal character. Mm-hmm. And like, it goes for everything. But because he makes like, you know, he cracks a joke. He's like, ha, ah, bad Acetron. You know, <laughs> bad Acetron. Is- <laughs> Dude, wasn't that funny when they but, did that joke 14 billion fucking times? Yeah, so, so, it was so funny. It made me want to merge without looking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I will say... He feels like very much a mix of um, my friend pointed this out to me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right." It was like he feels like a bit of like um, a bit like animated in G1 in a sense, like if you combined them, but also made them like a, a kind of you know like you kid him up a bit more. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I I think yeah. See what I'm thinking, right? Mm. If they played him kind of more like animated or G1. He would be a bit too similar to Optimus. He'd be kind of blown in the background. I think they've really had to like up the contrast and make him a little bit silly. No, yeah, no, no. That's like why I, I, I you know, I like him like that way. He was, he was completely fine in the film. I was like, I was not like screaming in my chair, going like, "They ruined him! <laughs> this is bollocks! They ruined Bumblebee!" Yeah, he's like, I feel like um, you're not gonna get annoyed. Um, I feel like you're probably gonna go like, "Oh yeah, that joke's a bit overused," but it's not like gonna like. Piss you off. I like how the, he's very, I like how the animated him. Very good. He was he was very bouncy and kind of. Uh, oh yeah, like, yeah, that's the thing. He's just like very bouncy and energetic. I love that. Very much a cartoon. Like that's character. what I wanted, Bumblebee. Yeah. So uh, this is like does he does he? And you can tell like um Keegan Michael Key enjoyed his role, so I was very happy about that. <laughs> do, does he get the Bumblebee man approval? Yeah, he gets he gets the Bumblebee man approval. Good, good. Um, he's and it's not dog shit like um. <laughs> Like, like, like TFP. <laughs> He's not dodgy like TFP. I haven't seen Transformers Prime in ages, and I, I'm seeing a lot more slander by the years. I, I feel like I need to revisit it and, like, see if, uh, uh, like... Well, yeah, Bumblebee fucking sucks in that show. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyway, well, fuck you. Anyways, uh, I, I feel like, uh, why don't we just talk about the villains now, yeah? Because... Oh, yeah. Mm, I feel like we gotta mention the one who was, like, who was shown in the trailer, but isn't actually, like, a fucking villain. Like, it's just for one scene. Quintessons? Yeah. yeah, I feel like um, we got a very minor note just to like, get him in. Yeah, I, I feel like mm. um, the Quintessons, like a lot of things in this movie, they purely exist just to get to the good stuff where it's like the total, like, just the really good drama with Optimus and Megatron. I feel like they are, they're yeah, they, a stepping stone for that. They were just shown <laughs> and they were like made for like the plot. And like, I feel like. It was like how like they usually did. It's like you know how like they advertise like Shockwave as the main villain for like Dark of the Moon. Oh yeah. And then it was it was like that effect where it's just like they advertised it, but like no, it's Sentinel Prime. Which in this film it's also Sentinel Prime. <laughs> well, it has to repeat itself. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. Still, I think the, the Quintessons they had they had quite a presence in the movie, uh, nonetheless. Yeah. They, they, like they influence a lot. Um. They they have like a literal presence of how they can intimidate the characters. How uh, Central Prime gets bondage roped up, and there's the big he goes yeah. right in his face, and it stinks of vape juice. Uh, yeah, it stinks of uh, a Sergeant Brown pod. They wraps his face. They they've got a kind of like mysterious presence to them. Like why are they here? What are they? What what, what the fuck? Huh? Why? I I like that. Yeah. They are, like they're aliens. Like I was saying there before, they are freaky aliens. One thing, right? The design. It's very good too. Yeah, I, I really I like think, the designs. Um, it's a pretty good ad- adaptation of Floro Deary weird space egg things. That's pretty cool. I I do kind of miss yeah. how can like cartoony and weird um, the the Floro Deary designs are and being a bit of a G one or maybe could have had a bit more of an influence there with the kind of the, just the bizarre like mm. kind of late twentieth century sci fi look to them. But one thing. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get to like see them fully, so I don't know if there's like the fucking. Eddie guy, that would be cool. whoever his name is. <laughs> that would be cool if there was a big spinning egg guy they have to fight in the next movie, because there's going to be an egg yeah. movie, isn't there? There has to be. Yeah, there's got to be. <laughs> it's the G.I. Joe crossover watch. <laughs> uh, I, you know, because, like, they're, I feel they're mainly there to, like, be a part of the plot and move it forward, mm-hmm. which is completely fine, you know. But, like, I will say, and this is moving to the actual villain, which I guess, like, the one who, like, does it for most of the film 
do you okay real good question here do you think Samuel Prime in this movie is way better than Dark of the Moon? Of course he is. He's such a driving factor in the plot. He, oh, I, obviously, you have Leonard Nimoy playing this uh, very, very well animated CGI dude in Dark of the Moon, and that's that's the biggest compliment I'm gonna I'm gonna give Dark of the Moon. You're not gonna get anything else out of me. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, pretty dark shit movie. Uh, <laughs> even then, the the scene where he's like, "We had to make an alliance," or whatever he says, and he fucking blows up Ironhide with rust. That was. That still stuck to me. Uh, I remember going to my pals and seeing that in the pictures. Um, as you know, the prime demographic, we were like 11, 10, you know, going to see Yeah, you as a little Wayne. A Wayne. Um, that still stuck to me. That's a pretty creative way to show your guys evil by having him use an inhumane rust gun in someone. Uh, but yeah, I think this Sentinel Prime, it, it's the, this one here, getting back to the, to the subject. This, uh, this kind of guy who leans into the weirdly classist um well not weirdly i mean like kind of like just unexpected classist tones of this movie which i don't know like how, how did you feel about that how it was like um it very much showed how these kind of rich and powerful types the guys in charge uh the the, the Portuguese, they dangle kind of mm. incentive and promises to the kind of the, the oh yeah class to make them like work harder for their kind of maybe more nefarious means Maybe mm. call, call me I mean, like a Lindsay Ellis type who's like maybe reading in too much into this literal children's movie, but things like that <laughs> and the gambling jackpot machine and the poor miners like uh, kind of like cubbyhole, the little things like that were like maybe you'd think like wow there's kind of a undertone to this movie about this um how uh, you know revolution and uh, kind of working uprising. I did people. tell you that. Yeah, you, you, you did tell me that. Like, yeah. I was like, overthrow the government type deal, like, themes. But, uh, sorry, I, I, I forgot what we were talking about Sentinel Prime, yeah. Uh, I, th I think this character is purposely designed to, like, you know, kind of, like, chew the scenery, take up the scene, be this big force that's, like, in charge. And, uh, like I was saying, the Sentinel's rust cannon, he has this big fuck-off evil sword, which he beheads people with. Yeah, he's like, there's, like, a, you know... For all you, it's like, oh, you know, if you didn't see the film, but, you know, go see Why it. Why you, if you're watching anything. this without seeing the film, uh, Edgar, I know you're watching this, right? He's so, he, when we did the Rise of the Beast video, we were far too positive about that movie, and I feel, I feel a little bit silly, right? He, he had not seen Rise of the Beast when he was watching our Yapathon with, like, 200 views max. What the, if you, if you yeah. haven't seen this fucking movie, what are you doing? Don't rob yourself of another experience in this limited earth, you fuck. Yeah, but, um. Cause like there's a full-on scene where he's like fully like um like as you said with the ISIS execution, like, he was like straight like he was straight up beheading. He was gonna behead people. Yeah, I thought he was gonna actually like take out a few uh, like Decepticons or sorry the old guard or high guard whatever they called. He, I thought he was gonna like pick up like, people to like piss off Megatron. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and like um like how it plays into the fucking sticker thing where he like straight up like melted like straight up like um in like Transformers animated. Where they like meld uh, the symbol. Mm, that, um, I, he, he says a bit of a cheesy line. He's like, "What are you gonna do, Megatron? Rise up!" That felt like one of those like <laughs> those like fake like daft prediction videos. Where it's, it's like <laughs> you're supposed to. It's like one of those yeah. like it's like uh, it's like it's like the fucking like it was, it's you, Patrick. You're the American psycho. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to be the hero, Brian. Yeah, shit like that. It's like stuff like that where it's like you don't have the touch, you don't have the power, Optimus. I groaned out loud when I heard that in the pictures. I was like, oh. <laughs> Like, I, I feel like yeah. this movie would be <laughs> still as good if you didn't put stuff like that in it where it's like if you didn't put those like cheesy like clearly like references yeah so, so like so some guys like fat man tits can clap when he jumps up and down like, he's like, <laughs> I don't need to, yeah, like, oh, 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 oh. I don't need to see Optimus Prime in the 86 movie pose for the like the 80th time this is this, this franchise hey, is hey, that's like the third yeah, time this franchise is 40 years old I, I, he's getting more poses than that he the, uh, but okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Do the fucking um, do the fucking pose they did in the old 2007 promotional images. I missed that. Fox. I missed that. That makes me giggle. Uh, but uh, like he, he does <laughs> things of like the axe and all that later in the movie, so I feel like you know he's very yeah. Whatever. Uh, so, but he's huh? very intimidating too. Like he straight up like um when he like talks to like Megatron about Megatron, he's just like oh when I killed him I took his cock. <laughs> it's like it's like very intimidating and like but still like clearly like his dick dickhead ways. Yeah, this um. It, Again, I, I suppose with the very little knowledge of that show I have, I have to naturally make a comparison to the boys where I think it's very much inspired of this kind of like, um, 
I guess like media celebrity kind of like guy with influence that's the kind of vibe they're going for of sentinel prime where like this guy wins yeah over charisma and stuff and it very much took me out when i saw that megatron was like fully just behind all of sentinel primes like charisma and stuff i kind of like grimaced in the theater i was like oh that's you know i i didn't want to go into this movie with too much influence like i was saying I, but i did have more than meets the eye and like megatron rising all that stuff in the back of my head i'm like what the he's not supposed to like him you know it's like it, it, yeah. it took a minute for it to win me over but it made sense in the movie to see the total juxtaposition he had at the end where he does round up members of isis and he does uh, execute sentinel prime yeah like he straight up like um he rips them in half yeah i thought he was gonna get ambulant for a second <laughs> yeah he's just like it was like um as though i want to but i'm like actually done good it's like you know like you got to see the guts and shit everywhere fly yeah for like a fucking kids movie very much worth it for a villain who is just shown to be uh just a hundred racist coming just this guy who sells out uh, the working class uh with a smile lies straight to the face etc etc he is not a very sympathetic villain uh and Ar he's racist arachnid too. as well arachnid is a fucking menace in this movie Oh yeah, and um, as a, as a person who doesn't like the character from TFP, I was like very shocked. I was like, oh, you know, she's kind of cool. And uh, I I hope they keep her about because she kind of just vanishes um midway through the third act. Yeah, yeah. She she has this cool gimmick where like she has all the eyes. Um, she is animated really well. Um, just with such a flow and kind of bounce, but like not like Bumblebee where like um like a spidery like feel. A sticky spider. Um, it's it's not like Bumblebee where it's like cartoony and bouncy. It's like she has like scary momentum and she will fly into you and cut you in half and shit that's it's like freaky that, like, Slender Man like what like slender man like slender man no um I, I love the way she like <laughs> flies away when she transforms very i i feel like some things were lacking this these days a very cool creative alt mode that reflects the character it's based on like oh she yeah has, like, all these slender thin black sharp shapes and she turns into this big like I, kind of like almost like weirdly kind of contrasting like um rounded like hovercraft thing but at the same time it makes sense because uh she has those kind of curved spiral legs it's, it's really cool and i hope they bring her back because um obviously with the whole like we can't kill any of our enemies apart from these mindless drones who may or may not be mindless but it's morally dubious like they keep her alive and i really hope they they bring her back for this because uh there could be potential there with this character who was the 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 elite but um is now with the decepticons showing that maybe the parallels again like i was saying with sentinel prime and megatron maybe they're not so different very in the much way that they are kind of bad guys yeah because it's like the because the film is very much like origin story it's not it doesn't go into the war and so like i feel like the logical conclusion if they do a second one is go like full war I, know, I can't even imagine that, honestly. That would be crazy for a film. What would you even do with that? Well, like... I don't know, but, like, I really want to see it. I was like, I had, two, I had either two ideas. It's like, oh, they could either adapt Shadowplay or, like, just do the war. Shadowplay, yeah, Shadowplay is pre-war. And I think there's very much as wartime now. Or, or maybe maybe there could be, like, a brief lull period where, like, there is still peace, but the Decepticons are like slowly infiltrating society. I don't know. That's uh, that's a conversation for another day. Maybe. But um, Arach yeah. I, I want to say one thing, right? Tell me if you thought the same. Arachnid, right? Uh, see with her design, or like her freaky alien kind of features, right? And uh, Sentinel's yeah. alliance with the, the Quintessons. I thought she would be some kind of hybrid or something, like a Quintesson made like uh, Transformer or something. Oh, you like they would have like gotten like the like the. Um... Like the protoform yeah, thing, yeah. Like made her like a weird hybrid thing. Uh, no, she's she's just a I, fucking freak. There's there's no kind of implication. Yeah, she's just a, she's just a freak. <laughs> she's a weirdo. I don't know why she's doing she, here. She she's freak. She's scary. Uh, so I think Sentinel and Arachnid is very very cool. I like her. Um, it's it's a nice new take on like the the kind of a dipshit. Um, well not maybe maybe not a dipshit, but like the kind of. As if you take animated uh, Sentinel and like rank him up high, like like really crank up his asshole nature season, and like ego. Season four Sentinel. <laughs> that around. Yeah, that and like make make him racist. <laughs> make him racist, but put that in the studio. Ma make him a chud. <laughs> make him a chud. <laughs> <laughs> this page needs a hero. No, um, 
and I, I, I just this <laughs> lethal assassin that he has. That's it's a kind of it's just it's that trope done well. That's that's fair. That's fair. However, I do want to say um with uh, other villains, right? I think Starscream's perfectly fine in this. I like how uh, you told me that, like, yeah. you know, before this movie came out, he would have like the the I think the the Doberman dog from Up with the kind of weird voice thing. I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I told you, like, oh, his that? voice gets fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I, I was talking to someone at TFN who had seen the film already, uh, uh, and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's like Starscream, uh, you know, getting choked. I'm like, ah! Oh! Um, and uh, at the end, <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny to hear his squeaked-up voice just instantly bootlicking Megatron. Like, the second the tide turns, he's just like, all hail Megatron. Yeah, it's like... Cause like, I guess like they were like, oh, like you know, they did like, cause like G1 Starscream has that like very like squeaky Lata, voice. Yeah. yeah, Chris Lada. Like I guess they wanted to imitate that, but they couldn't like get Steve Buscemi, so they basically did what the like the fucking dog from Up did, <laughs> or like for, like comedic effect. He, but it was it was very I think neat. He sounded pretty good without the filter. Yeah, no, he did. I did enjoy it, like, and I, it kind of makes me wonder, cause like they originally had Tom Kenny. I want to hear like, that for cut. The role. Yeah, like, definitely. I really want to hear that cut. Yeah, release the Tom Kenny cut. You didn't, like, give us transit. Give us fucking Tom give Kenny. Give us transit, now provide SpongeBob. Uh, I, I think Starscream, Steve Buscemi, he can play a kind of sleazeball fuck character like that, who has a kind yeah. of dimension to it. I like that. Obviously, yeah, I am soprano pilled. I, I do like Animal Blundetto. Um, I can't yeah. say the same for Soundwave and Shockwave, though. They, f they feel... Like, they're in the background and there for, like, you to clap. And they're, like, you know, like... It, it, we, okay, I'll say it like this. For Bumblebee, it was unique. Because we never got to see these characters. Like, in their, like, full-on, like... How they were made to look. And how they, like, were made to it's act. It was a nice cameo. And, like, for... It was a nice cameo. And they, like, actually did stuff. But, like, for, like... In, like, in one... It's, not, it's more of just a nitpick. But it feels like they were just... There, yeah. they were there in the background. They did stuff. If it was just the Seekers and like Skywarp, Thundercracker, Conehead, Slipstream, and Starscream, uh, I th I think yeah. I would have no complaints. But it's just like certain all Soundwave does is check them for. Uh, it's a cool effect, admittedly, right? He checks to see if they're lying, and then like he frees everyone from their cuffs at the end during the train uh, 9/11 scene, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. He he does that, but like Shockwave, I can't even say anything. He just he punched he punched me he in my eye, joke. and that's about it. It's like. Yeah? Mm hmm. He, he, he cracks one joke and it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> cracks one joke, dies. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like I was like, okay, just saying it one here. I really want to, like, listen, if this movie was Kino, they would have straight up done, um, like, fucking, like, like IDW Shockwave type levels. If this movie was Kino, they would have had shit at a Shockwave. I, actually, yeah, now you mention it. I was doing a bit there, but like, can you imagine like a Senator Shockwave who like loses faith or like he knows the truth about Sentinel Prime or something? Yeah, they, they were, uh, as I said, it would have actually that, been really that good could, if they that did that. Could maybe shown more like civilian life in Cybertron. I, I think we both just really yeah. want uh, more than meets the eye shadow play movie. <laughs> <laughs> we really do. Uh, like Transformers minus one, where um, it's the it's just shadow play adapted one to one. That thank you, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, uh, Paramount. Um, uh, James like, Roberts, um, big fat paycheck. Uh, Alex Milne uh, does the. Mm, I feel. I feel we should do. Um, we should mention the soundtrack. Soundtrack, definitely. I, um, yeah. Brian Tyler's yeah. comeback uh, to do the soundtrack for this movie, uh, and I, I think yeah, it's 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 fine. It's it's cool, right? And uh, it's like decent. But then uh, I think we've been putting it off for a while now. The we should just talk yeah, about the, it. <laughs> the just the, the lunch climax, pin, the linchpin of this movie, which is the birth of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Uh, it's you know like that was the, like see um megatron optimus fighting that was when like i was kind of like you know edge like i was edging i was the edge of my seat a little bit like i could feel like a little bit of adrenaline caution for me that like but it's like they uh they finally fucking got megatron right and they gave us kino yeah. they gave us a great ass fight I, like i maybe the maybe this is like yeah <laughs> a worrying thing to say but seeing Megatron like get his fucking hands in Sentinel and he's crawling away from him and you can feel that kind of like that kind of catharsis that evil sinister catharsis that I was like I was like I, I that, this is, that pure yeah, violence this is like oh my I have been waiting so long to see this I wanted Bumblebee in the Megatron movie this like 
I, all I had to do was wait, like, what, five years? And this is the Megatron movie. He's about to get his hands on him. He's about to change everything. I, I, I won't go, like, too Megatron uh, glazer mode, to, like, like, you know, like I sometimes do, but it's like... Mm! Yeah. This, this, this movie yeah, he, made me he, feel he, things. Like, he... T- and, and, like, um, it calls back to, like, with the scene where, like, you know, he talks about how he took, like, uh, Megatron as his cog. Like, he takes it back and he puts it on him and he, like, straight up gets, like, a new ult for him and, like, changes, like, his shape and everything. Yeah, yeah, he, like, oh, it's so fucking good. Like, this this movie about toys fighting each other, it's making me feel something. And that's incredible. Just, like, the fact that this character is, like, crawling away, that he can't like he can't do anything megatron has like crawled his way from the bottom to fight this man to fight this guy at the very top and he's going to change everything right and the only one in his way from like this total collapse of society is optimus because uh, like we said at the start he's open-minded he's he's uh ma- again maybe a little naive but he's like he's smart and intelligent he knows this isn't the right thing to do and that's when this beautiful scene comes together where orion packs in this new world, which they've kind of crafted in a day or so, Orion Pax does not belong in that world, and so he dies with it. It's just, it's just, it's just fucking great, man. Yeah, like Megatron has birthed along with himself this new world. He's he's beheaded the old way. He started a new era, and Orion Pax doesn't belong in it, and that's why he dies. But the only way to save this new era is Optimus Prime, and like you're saying, with the music. I loved this so much, right? When Optimus is falling to the core of Cybertron, which I'm very lucky for him, by the way, I want to say he's falling right to the core. He's 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 gonna die, right? Hello. Mhm. Yeah, 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 this is a very important recording. How you doing, bro? How'd you feel about Transformers One? Yeah, I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, well, you, you didn't show up because we booked you a ticket and you didn't. You didn't. You I've, I'm not seeing your mouse, bro. I'm sorry. Dian, what would you give <laughs> Transformers one out of ten? Probably one. Probably, oh, it's gonna, one. It's gonna give a just just to match it. <laughs> it's in the title. True, bro. Transform- true, bro. Facts. Transformers one out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's a swarmy YouTube review title. Transformers one out of ten. This is bollocks. Sorry. It's fucking. Yeah, I, 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 I had a good flow there, and I, 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 right. So um. Yeah, but it's like. Sorry, you go. On. Straight up, just like he's falling down, he gets like saved. Like we get like the TFP like light motif, just like fucking mm-hmm. like shows mm-hmm. us. It's like you know, make those like uh for the primes. This is like which uh, yeah, no motif for the primes. About that. Maybe they overplayed it a little bit, but no one ever complained about how nice that music sounded. And I, I see no reason to not like kind of make it this uh thing in the back of your head that reminds you of like oh this is like the kind of big magical destiny uh, transformers music but uh, what, what i wanted to say is right I, I don't know how many people have noticed this right see when you listen to the soundtrack and i think this is mm-hmm. like, perfect for the parallels and themes of this movie the the kind of the little kind of rising scene that plays as optimus falls as he falls down right it is the same little kind of tune when Optimus Prime dies in the 86 movie. This is the death of Orion Pax, but as the music rises instead of kind of fading away, it's the birth of Optimus Prime. This is the beginning of his life. And it's like, oh my god, it's... Ke- and it's Kino, and it's Kino, it's like... And it's it's peak cinema. And peak it's, cinema, peak, it's like, this movie was like, you know, on and off for like the past maybe hour and a half. But like, holy shit, this this is the linchpin. This is what it was all building up to, and I really can't complain. It's just it just triggered, and you just got good, just got great. Cause see the whole movie, right? You, you said there was a scene that mm-hmm. like left you just stunned, right? And I'm looking for that. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. in the back of my head. I'm thinking Ralph said there was a, there was a scene that just left him shocked. I'm like, I don't see it yet. Is it the bit where they see the surface and it's nice looking? Cause that that's cool, but it's like it's not gonna, you know, change my life. But it's like. <sighs> He draw like just the parallels. He drops Optimus. He lets him down. Uh, the the birth of Megatron, but from that comes Optimus Prime, with this beautiful motif. These these visuals of him. I know it's a bit bullshitty how he falls into Primus's arsehole and comes out as Optimus Prime, but it's like who cares? You, you've won me over. You've won me over. I understand him now. <laughs> I get it. I get it now. I get it. Oh my god, I get it. It's um. 
it really it really can't be understated how nice that scene is it's it, it's cinema it is just good writing good visuals like the build up you're invested in i it's something i feel like we all want to aspire to because it's just it's what you want to see because everybody's like messed around with these fucking figures and like going like oh like when they're going go like this guy does this thing but like you just like project like the idea of what happens in like your brain mm. and like i feel like this is like one of those like moments where like you can clearly tell the person who made this film was like projecting what they thought of as a kid and what they did i, I think there is a lot of kind of childhood wonder in this film like um the smokestack shooting out fire that's like a kind of very like i need this toy to do a cool new thing so i can play it but that's like little creative things like that um i think yeah you're gonna agree with me on this i love the bit where he attacks like the soulless evil sinister drone and he just transforms around it to like snap it in half oh yeah oh. Oof. yeah I, if, okay if this i i gotta ask you because i watched the film early so i don't know if anything changed but let's talk about um people don't talk about this much but let's talk about sound effect, like uh sound, sound design, design. Yeah. how do you feel about sound design? sound design uh it's quite good in this movie when they transform for the first time it's this nice big bassy like kind of chunky transformation yeah. sound it's satisfying i had a big grin in my face uh i feel like all the because because like when i saw the film the sound design was like my, my least like noticeable as aspect i thought it was like it was like it's there it's not like you know nothing noticeable so like, i i thought i asked you i was like oh what was your thoughts on it i i, I think all the impacts have weight to it uh, you know, like Darkwing fucking mm -hmm. clobber and Optimus and all that. That it's got weight to it. It's pretty cool. Uh, Optimus summoning his axe is a big moment, and the the kind of the weight of it and the sound reflects that. It, it, yeah, it's, it's it's cool. Obviously, the music. Um, I feel like uh, maybe had a bit more of an influence on me just the way it carries itself. But we, yeah, the, you know, yeah. is, if there's one thing, it's gotta be that we love our good sound design. We love our good sound design. You know, we love our good sound design. Yeah, like like a, like in TFA where like the characters' weights and the sound effects are different, like how Bumblebee like has like pots and pans like whenever he walks <laughs> yeah. to show that he's more lightweight. Yeah, yeah, you, you pay attention to that. Yeah, when you notice it, you, you, it sticks with you. I I do like um like I was saying there where like Megatron has his cannon ripped off and it reattaches to his back. You can hear like gears and shit like readjusting as the cannon rotates. That's um that makes it like, feel tactile and palpable and real. Exactly. Um, if there's um, I feel like uh, if there's one thing, it's it's got like because here's the thing. I feel like that's the least noticeable thing, but it's completely fine because everything else is like, if you got a film that like looks so beautiful, like you know, there's and it's got like a great like like atmosphere to it. As I feel like in sound of like you know soundtrack, it's like you can't really complain about sound design. Yeah, yeah. I I, I do want to yeah. say um. Uh, sorry, just because I'm like, I don't have too much notes for this. I, I'm kind of just flying off the feeling I have. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just, just like spilling yeah, out. I really am at this point. I, th I think we both are. I love the little visuals near the end. Uh, again, going back to the final act where Megatron's... The, Megatron's eyes have like a character arc where they go from yellow, orange, oh, yeah. and then yeah. red with like a nice after... Oh my fucking god! Yeah. Right. Exactly! Uh, it's, I, as soon as like I saw that, you know those like the was it universe like that flash animated cartoon i think yeah it's like it was like the one where it's like they were basically just like it was like clearly like a like they got one person to animate <laughs> voice act but it's like how it's like how they always like they colored megatron's eyes to be yellow but like at the end it's like he turns red it's like as soon as i saw that, i was like oh it's my god flash it's like that it's all a big flash cartoon yeah i'm making i'm making a big flash cartoon <laughs> reference that like nobody fucking gets I, except I for really me like how the eyes have like an after image uh, when he's like all evil and sinister yeah. no one's ever done that before uh, okay out of um the entirety of the transformers franchise where would you rank oh okay good one uh i think Optimus Prime getting shot and dying looks way cooler than he did in Revenge of the Fallen. I'm going to say that much. Uh, okay, are, are, like the entire mm. franchise, everything, like just media? Yeah, sure, why not? So, like, at, at least you movies. Okay, you, you're, you're hitting me with this far so you can see what I say. Um, definitely up there, right? Uh, I feel like... Yeah. It's got to be up at least up at gonna, the top. You know, be a bitch for me. I think this might be a Bumblebee movie situation where the longer I dwell on it, the nicer it gets for me. Because I, I didn't really like Bumblebee all too much when I first saw it. 
I, I like this movie when I came out of it, right? Um, I, I like Bumblebee when I came out of it, but both of those movies have, well, Bumblebee, sorry, Bumblebee's aged very well for me, and I appreciate it more and more as time goes on. And I don't know if this will be the same, right? Because I, it's mm -hmm. open for a sequel. Bumblebee's a very kind of just like, uh, it's a, it's a solid film that like has a start to yeah. end, and it's like finishes, and it feels like you're happy with it nonetheless. But with this movie, uh, it's like I said. This is a, like a 7 out of 10 movie with that 10 out of 10 scene near the end, right? Uh, and it's yeah. just like, there's a lot of things that you said. That some things just need to happen for the plot. Uh, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. but like, I need to see that maybe paid off a little bit with a sequel, if that ever happens. So I mm -hmm. wonder, right, will this movie be better with the sequel in mind? Like, uh, maybe, like you said, Spider-Verse? Uh, I'm not sure. But overall ranking, I want to say... Maybe I'm biased. I don't think it's it's as good as Transformers Animated. Transformers Animated had the vibes for me. Uh, I'm very much biased for it. Shoot that fucking ghost in the background. Mm -hmm. I, I... Yeah, yeah. That was peeping Tom. I'm sorry. Uh, Transformers Animated very much um... had the vibe for me. I but I think maybe this is uh, this is okay. This is maybe not visually as nice as the '86 movie because the 86 movie is just that it, it just looks really nice that kind of old school cell animation mm. uh but this is better than the 86 movie i want to say and like my favorite transformers media this is probably around the beast wars animated and um the 86 movie it's like the top four top five all right. it's all right it's as for me you know. like just going for me I'm just picking out films because if I if I talk about media, I'm here for all day. But like, <laughs> um, Bumblebee will always stay as the conclusive best Transformers Ooh. film for me because it's just like, and I and I don't know if people are gonna agree with that. Uh, might but be divisive. I'm, I'm just saying it out there. Might be divisive, but but the way the film is is just like it's always stayed with me. I've always felt positive. I've always came out of it loving it, and and not just because the character I love is like in the film, but like. It's just stayed, and it's just hold up well. So it's always going to be a number one. I feel like number two is going to be one. It's like how number two is just one. like really well put together. What does that mean? That's not the fucking movie title, but but as I said, I, you know, and if you want to hear my opinions, you watch the fucking video. But um, that's it. Um, and I still like the film, although, like as you said, like the last Yap session was basically. Like time has changed and like you've grown more like critical. Yeah. Uh, I got to go to Rise of the Beast for three. I, I feel like we were way too easy in that film. We were we just wanted to we we, we just wanted yeah. to enjoy a movie instead of thinking maybe a bit too critically. But uh, no, I, I definitely think this movie uh, this it's movie very much that last Rise of the Beast out of war. It, it does, and I feel bad for Rise. <laughs> you of the Beast. you, you feel a little like, bit of empathy, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rise of the Beast stirred, and I guess you could just put. All the Bayverse movies in the other section. The other section, I don't know. Like, a little bit. Uh, I guess like four. I guess four is like 2007. 2007's... And then the rest is just like. 2007 is very solid. 2007 is very much a 1 a.m. and a Saturday night decent movie. But this, this is an event. Yeah. Exactly. This is. Like, this is and all the other films. You just put them in the trash. Forget that. Forget about it. Maybe this isn't as close. Uh, <laughs> this gives me kind of like early, very good kind of comic book movie vibes. This is like, maybe not as close to Spider-Man 1, but it feels like that. It has that energy to it. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? And that's and great. Uh, honestly, um, if the sequel is anywhere near Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, I will shit in a hat because uh, I will have no reason to ever complain ever again. <laughs> yeah. But... I feel, I feel like uh, that's basically uh, it. Yeah. This is uh, I've been God. I've been Geg the Third, and you've listened to our Transformers animated season four movie review podcast. Keep keep getting on. Keep, keep, keep get ready for the GI Joe Transformers. Ah! Movie. Ah!